Alexander sat on a stoop. He didn't seem in any distress at all on the outside. Inside, though, he was numb. The trouble was he didn't know why. It was a Tuesday, like any other. He was on his way to a piano lesson, like every Tuesday. School was fine, as usual. Just then, Alexander knew two things. Something was fundamentally wrong, and he needed his mom. Alexander's mother was not there. She was at work, as she always was on a Tuesday afternoon. He had taken the subway to his piano teacher's apartment building, and he was sitting on the stoop watching people walk past. People running late, walking their dogs, talking on the phone, an old woman walking impossibly slow. They were united in paying no mind to Alexander. He would never have asked for any of their help, but secretly, so secretly he was trying to hide it from himself, he wished just one of them would notice he needed help. His skin felt cold and clammy. A tingling sensation kept building up at the back of his head, and he kept having to remember to take breaths. It wasn't that he was afraid, it was that he didn't know why. He was so afraid. He hugged his backpack close, imagining it was holding him back. He wanted to call his mom, but she would be at work. She'd pick up, but she wouldn't be happy. It was then that a man stopped at the bottom of the stoop. The man was tall, a little pudgy, and had a messy beard and long black hair but he smiled as he stopped, leaning against the bottom of the railing on the stairs. You all right? asked the man. Alexander nodded vigorously. He only wanted a stranger to stop, in theory. The man looked around, watching people walk past. You sure? Alexander nodded again, looking at his knees this time. Well, maybe you could help me. Uh, I'm not in Manhattan much. Could you tell me where the nearest one train is? Alexander looked up. If you go to the end of the street that way, he said, pointing, and then take a right and walk two blocks, it's on the corner. Oh, thank you so much, said the man, looking where Alexander pointed. The man didn't walk that way, though. Your voice sounds kind of shaky. Can I call anyone for you? No, I'm fine, said Alexander. The man nodded, then turned and took a couple steps. Then he stopped, sighed, and turned back around. I think you're having a panic attack. I've dealt with a lot of them, said the man, taking a couple steps back to the stoop. Alexander thought for a moment. He definitely wasn't having a panic attack. Those looked like hyperventilating and crying and acting crazy. He'd seen them in movies, and none of that was happening. I'm fine, he said, a little bit of grit in his voice. I get it. Weird guy comes up to you and starts talking. I, I could be dangerous. The strange thing was, though, that Alexander honestly didn't think he was dangerous. Alexander wasn't a dumb kid, which meant he knew he was 13 and therefore a dumb kid, but still. I'm late for my piano lesson he said after a moment's pause. Why aren't you on your way there? asked the man. Because my teacher's in this building. Can't get in? Alexander said, I haven't tried. And his voice was higher than normal. The man leaned back against the railing. How's your day been? Fine, said Alexander. But he gasped, not realizing how much he needed a breath. But I don't feel good and I don't know why. That's okay, said the man. There's nothing weird about that. I've never felt like this before, said Alexander. Everything has a first time, including the bad stuff. I bet talking to your mom or dad would help. You have a phone you can call them on? My mom's at work. I don't want to bother her. Why don't you want to call your mom at work? I'm sure she wouldn't mind if you need help. Alexander was grateful the man didn't ask about his dad. She does a lot. I don't, I, I wouldn't want to make her day harder. 
Alexander didn't know why he was saying this. The man just felt safe in a familiar kind of way. She already does a lot for me. I can understand that, said the man in a truly knowing tone. But I also know she works a job to take care of you. And if getting bothered while she works takes care of you too, she'd be just fine being bothered. She already does a lot for me, said Alexander. The man smiled, but there was some odd look in his eyes. You know, it's not your job to take care of her. Alexander considered the man's words. He weighed them against the worldview he'd unconsciously built. Slowly, the overwhelming need he didn't know he had built up. It was like a thunderstorm filling a reservoir until at last the dam broke. Alexander began to cry. He started crying so quickly he couldn't even hide his face before the tears and sobs were leaking out. The man stepped forward, sitting down next to Alexander, and he put a hand on his back. I know, he said softly. I know. It's okay, you can cry as much as you need to. You probably worry about what people walking past think, or what I think, or what you think of you, but it's okay. It's brave to cry when you need to. Alexander did have all those worries, and having someone voice them made him cry harder. It was so freeing. It was some release from the uncertain state of numb fear he'd been in. He didn't know when he started being held by the man, but he was soon sobbing into his chest. He felt almost safe again. He suddenly appreciated how safe he usually felt. It's so hard to feel everything you're feeling, said the man softly. It's so overwhelming, and it's even harder when you don't know why. Alexander kept crying. When the sobs began to relent, he'd have some thought that made them redouble. He hadn't cried in front of strangers for years. Alexander was finally calming down when his phone began to ring. It was his piano teacher. The man moved away, and Alexander took a couple of steadying breaths. Hi, Susan, he said, just a little shaky as he answered. I'm sorry, I, I lost track of time. No, I'm not gonna make it in time. No, I'm okay. I'll tell my mom what happened. Yeah, I'll still be there next week. Thanks. Bye. Doing better? Asked the man. Alexander nodded. What's your name? Alexander. It was only then he remembered he'd been sobbing in the arms of a stranger. What a coincidence, he smiled. I'm Alex. It's okay to have a hard time. You're not weak for struggling, you're strong for taking care of yourself. And you're going to have to sometimes. We all do. He got to his feet. You're going to be okay. Even when you don't think you are, you're going to be okay in the end. Because you're a strong, brave kid. Now head home and tell your mom what happened. She might not get it at first, but she'll try. Okay, said Alexander as he brushed his black hair back out of his eyes. Okay, said Alex.